my first thought is what a haircut if I'm being completely honest um <laughs> also my blazer my mum when I first went to school bought me this blazer that was too big for me when I was in year five and she made me keep it all the way through to year 11 so it's very you can see it's very ruined um but yeah I don't know I look quite happy in this picture which is probably because I was happy towards the end of school um this picture is I think like the leaving school picture where you're in your annual yearbook my school experience as a whole when I look back on it I feel was a pretty good school experience and I know a lot of people when you're at school you want to move on from school and you're constantly thinking oh I want to grow up I want to go to college I want to work I want to do this I want to do that looking back on school I think it's some of the best times of your life because you are spending time with hopefully some of your best friends and if you stay friends with those people you forget that when you become an adult you can't hang out with people every day like friends you have to work and do all this stuff whereas at school you just yeah you've got to study but you're with the people that you like every single day. I did experience a bit of bullying, uh, a couple of things. When I was in year seven, there was always this kid who was in year 11. Every time I used to walk past him in the corridor or in the toilets or anything, he'd either trip me up or he'd push, he used to push me into lockers, he'd push me down the stairs. Um, and I never knew why, and I never did anything about that. I just waited for him to leave school because he was in year 11, and then I was like, oh, he's never going to pick on me again. Um, and then I experienced bullying when I was in... How old was I? So I was about 12, 13, and I used to do gymnastics. Um, did it for a long time, did, competed at a high level, and people would call me names at school um, for doing gymnastics because I wore a leotard and um, they were like, oh, it's not cool that you do gymnastics, blah, 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 blah. So then that led to me quitting gymnastics, which now I guess I kind of regret because I was pretty good at it and who knows where I could have gone with it. But um, I never spoke to anyone about it. So I didn't speak to my mum, I didn't speak to a teacher. I was just like, oh yeah, mum, I'm going to quit gymnastics. She was like, oh, why do you want to quit? And I was like, oh, just don't like it anymore. So looking back on that, I should have probably spoke to someone about it. I guess in the two different situations, the lowest parts were with gymnastics. I just, it was, it was a long time after look like looking back now, it was at the time I just thought, Oh, it's not cool. I should stop doing gymnastics. And it didn't affect me that much. It was only after looking back when I was like, well, I was actually quite good at gymnastics. I shouldn't have let that stop me. And that's when I started to feel a bit down about that. It was more with him that, it would be, I'd feel so intimidated when I had to walk past him because they used to stand against the lockers and you had to walk through the middle. And I'd feel so intimidated walking past him and he'd like trip me and then everyone around's laughing. Um, so that's pro that was probably the lowest point on that. If you enjoy doing something or if you like doing something or you're good at something, you shouldn't stop it for any reason other than yourself making that decision. So I, someone else made that decision for me because they're telling me it's not cool and then I think oh it's not cool I should not do this if you're good at something I would say carry on doing it and only stop if you actually really do want to stop if you're nervous about going back to school if you've got friends that go to the same school at least hopefully you will have been hanging out with them in the summer but maybe think about like meeting up with them the weekend before you go back to school so that when you're talking about school and you're, you're nervous, someone else is sharing that experience with you. So it's not just you running it through your own head and panicking and thinking this and that, like just talk to a friend about it. Um, and then even if you can, like I used to get the train to school and I was lucky that I went to school with my little sister so we'd get the train together. Um, but think about maybe going back to school with a friend or seeing if you can share a lift or get the bus together, something like that, just so that, again, you're like taking your mind off it a little bit. I feel like YouTube, being a YouTuber and doing YouTube has given me so much confidence in my, not only myself, but talking to other people. Whereas when I was at school or doing, when I look back at presentations or even going through college, I was, you never look and think, oh, wow, that, that guy's really confident. But I feel like I've learned to be confident in myself through YouTube and just sharing what I'm passionate about and what I like to do. Um, which is why back going back to the bullying stuff, at the time, when I was at school, I didn't have anti-bullying ambassadors. I didn't have any kind of system like this in my school. So 
there was no one that I could have spoke well there was I could have spoke to a teacher but there was no one that there wasn't like an easy system that going to school I know that if I'm being bullied I can go and find an anti-bully ambassador and talk to them about it and there's a whole community there waiting for them which looking back on now I feel like if I had that when I was at school I would have been more confident when I was being bullied to be able to go and talk to someone about it but at the time when I was at school that wasn't there so I guess I just didn't feel like I could go and talk to anyone about it. Here's a message to anyone at school. This is also me as if I was talking to my 12 year old self. So I'm gonna address it as Marcus, but when I say Marcus, it means anyone listening to this. So Marcus, you were being bullied at school and you didn't talk to anyone about it. You let it affect you. You didn't go and tell your mom. You didn't go and tell teacher, you didn't tell friend. You just stopped doing everything that the bully wanted you to stop doing. If you could rewind time, you would, if you have anti-bully ambassadors in your school, you'd go talk to them. You'd go, to, or talk to anyone. You would have talked to your mum, you'd talk to a teacher, but anti-bully ambassadors, because that's now in your school. If it's not in your school, it will come to your school soon, hopefully. Uh, and if it's not there, then talk to someone, talk to a friend, talk to a family member, talk to a parent, talk to a teacher and just, because you're building it, all this stuff up inside and then you might make a decision that you think's right because then the bullying is going to stop. But that decision might not be right and you might look back and regret that decision. So talk to someone and think about what you really want to do about it. In the UK, 10 million children are going back to school. Over half of them will be affected by bullying. You can change that by helping us train an anti-bullying ambassador in every school. Go to antibullyingpro.com forward slash back to school 2016 to find out how. And make sure you share your back to school picture and your back to school advice using the hashtag back to school. This campaign is run by the Diana Award Charity.